a little background uh, is probably appropriate at this point. My mom got into genealogy in the mid 60s am as an amateur genealogist, just tracing the two sides of our family back. And she did that until for 30 years until just shortly before she passed away. And at that time, I had no interest in genealogy, and I packed up uh, all of her stuff. Most of it was paper. I recall seven bathtub-sized storage uh, cases going, uh, going into storage. A few years after that, I went to a family reunion and got interested in it again. I spent the better part of a summer hand entering all of her paperwork into Family Tree Maker for Windows which is quite a good program. Uh, at the time, I was messing around a little bit with Linux, and Family Tree Maker was the only program I was booting back into Windows for. So I was looking around for a Linux-based genealogy program, and at that point in time, to be charitable, everything out there was just the site lame. Hard to use, not very flexible. Well, I spotted this program just starting up uh, called Gramps. And I followed it for a while, and it got to the point where I thought it might be usable. So I exported my database out of Family Tree Maker and imported it into Gramps. And it was just about usable, and I've never looked back. Since then, Gramps has been ported to Windows, and that's what I'll demonstrate today. So it really doesn't have anything to do with the platform, but rather the software. <laughs> Every, every, every program has to have an acronym, so they picked Gramps and backfitted the, uh, the name, Genealogical Research and Analysis Management Programming System. But nowadays, it's just Gramps. Um, it's a community project. Um, what that means is everybody can contribute to it in some way, shape, or form. As an example, um, when I did that initial import, into Gramps, and it was a GEDCOM export file. It's either GEDCOM or GEDCOM. I can't. For, I've never seen, heard it pronounced. Um, the import worked fine, except for one field. It errored out. Well, there at that time there were two or three developers uh, working on it, and they had their email addresses uh, in the header of the program. So I emailed a question about it off to the uh, head programmer. And we exchanged a couple of emails back and forth that day. And he said, you mind sending me your import file? I'd like to look at it. I said, sure. At that point in time, I think I had about 400 people in the database. About a half a day later, I get an email back from him. Thanks, that's fixed in the next release. So uh, with open source products, you, projects, you can contribute. You do not have to be a programmer. Uh, you can contribute documentation, uh, spell checking, bug reporting. They really appreciate bug reports. So in any case, this is a community project, and the best software is written by subject matter experts. The best dental practice software is written by dentists, and similarly, genealogists who knew how to program wrote this. Um, they made it intuitive enough for hobbyists. You can uh, bang around in it and learn it without ever looking at the manual, but over the years, it's become feature complete for professional genealogists. Um, you can put thousands and thousands of people in here and uh, a complete feature set for tracking all aspects of their lineage. One of the things we'll let you do is look at your data in different ways. There's at least 11 different views for looking at the genealogy data. People, you can selectively, you can select on last name, first name, the ID, gender, birth date, whatever. This happens to be me. And you can see all of those view categories on the left from uh, people on the top to uh, notes down at the bottom. And we'll look at those very briefly. By the way, I'm just gonna rush through these uh, slides. Then I'll show a live demo and some other stuff. Relationships, this is another view of the data. Um, this is happens to be me with my smiling face in the corner. And you'll notice my father Kenneth, mother Francis, the little pen, pencil and paper on the right says you can edit 
uh, directly from this, my brother Bruce, uh, my spouse, and my children. And there are lots of different ways to look at the same grouping of people. Families. Um, this happens to be my grandfather, Orville Floyd Beach, and his, his wife, Tessie Berenger. Uh, if you double click this, this would pull up details of the family. You could add and delete children and other uh, metrics, parameters, data about the actual marriage itself. This is the graphical view. This is the, the chart showing me this is just a snapshot. Uh, it's very big, and we'll, we'll look we'll look at that when we go to the live view. Uh, you can add pictures. Um, you can edit the person directly from this uh, field too. Events. If you want to know all of the adopted events or alternate birth or uh, other comments, um, events are date based, and you can add as much information as you want about them, and they can be used by multiple people. Locations. Um, you can add the location in and you can be as detailed in it as you want. Observant people will see I have multiple entries for a couple sites. That was inadvertent. I uh, created uh, another site, say Knoxville there, and in instead of uh, reusing the existing place, I've got to go back and fix those. But there are maintenance utilities that let you do stuff like that. Geography. You can put place names, uh, show where people were born. I just wanted to show this map to show that it's uh, available. I don't use it. Sources. Um, I'm not a real genealogist. I don't even pretend to be one on TV. Um, but real genealogists, genealogists are very rigorous about sources. You have to be able to prove where you got that information. I'm a little more lack is lackadaisical about it. Uh, I'm, I'm just a documentarian, uh, but you can certainly put all your sources in there. Uh, this one here, Opal Parkins Beach, that was my aunt. She gave me a piece of data and I listed her as the source. This is where you enter vital information about a person. Um, the call on the right is your nickname. Uh, there's all sorts of date-based information. The little green plus down on the left is where you add information. You can highlight an, an item in there that might be wrong and use the edit uh, function there, the pencil and paper. You can delete it. You can change the sort order, all sorts of good stuff. Um, you'll see where the gender is marked male. Fortunately, that's correct. Um, it does a pretty good job of guessing gender. But if it can't, it'll say unknown, and you can manually correct it. Notes. Um, this is where you put stuff that isn't directly related, but is background information that's helpful. Um, a lot of these were citations that I pulled in that were my mom's. Um, I do put in occasional notes. It's very handy. It isn't any good to put all this data into a database if you can't get the data out. Fortunately, Gramps has a ton of uh, ways you can get information out. It has both graphical and textual reports. And within these reports, you can select how many generations you want to go back. And there are other, other ways you can adjust what's on the report. Some people object to having their uh, data uh, put out in any form of publication. They're very sensitive about that. You can flag their entry as private and it will not appear. Additionally, you can select an age that younger than that, they're not included, like young children. Um, I think the default age is 18 and you can do that also if you want. And there are some other selection parameters. And you can output in a ton of different formats. PDF, SVG is a graphical format, PostScript, and the OpenDoc format, which is LibreOffice. And uh, LibreOffice is a very excellent open source um, office suite. Uh, writer, calc, presentations, 
uh, very, very good. And if you have to send a PowerPoint or something to somebody, you can save it out of LibreOffice as the, the more or less standard Microsoft formats. Or you can send it direct to printer. One thing about reports on PDF, or actually any of these, uh, a PDF especially, the default size is letter size, eight and a half by 11. Well, that will fit data on about three people in a, in a, in a chart format. So what I've taken to doing, if somebody wants a report, a PDF to look at, I tell the report generator to generate in, in size C, D, or E paper. For those of you in the know, um, you'll know that those are very large formats. I think, um, I think D size is three foot by four foot. So you print it and it thinks that's a very, very large piece of paper. And it, as a result, you don't have the page breaks. So they'll have to zoom in to see details, but they can move around without having to jump from page to page. So that's very handy. Here's a, another report. I forget which one this is. You can see the arrow at the top for me, my wife, Beth, and it focuses in on my son, Eric, his wife, their kids, and then it spins back up to show all of uh, my daughter-in-law's uh, relationships. I did this, I don't know how I did this, uh, some tuning, you specify the parameters. And you can embed not only photos, but other media in the person's file, audio recordings, whatever. Here's a fan chart. If you've never seen it before, it's kind of cool. Uh, it shows you the generations and the number of generations is selectable. Um, if you need more detail on say my side, you can do a half fan and get more detail on one sheet. And obviously, if you have access to a large print format, uh, you can uh, print it out larger. I went to a family uh, gathering. Oh, I'd been working in genealogy, I don't know, six or eight years. And at the point, po that point in time, I worked for a firm that had a large HP plotter. So I printed out a multi-generation multi uh, ancestor spreadsheet uh, on uh, a couple of uh, e-sized pieces of paper and at the reunion I posted them on the wall and had people mark them up. It was very, very useful. And you can have places like Kinko's uh, print very large documents for you if you want. It's not cheap, but it's handy if you've got a special event to go to. So I don't do a lot of genealogical research, but here are some useful places to go. Um, Ancestry.com is not free. Some of the others are. I find find a grave very useful. And I wanna talk about the last two bullets there. <laughs> if you have some elderly members of your family, and even if you're not going to get involved in genealogy, before they pass away, have a chat with them and record it on an audio recorder. Get them to reminiscing. Um, if they mention somebody that's not known to you, if it's a, uh, female ancestor, ask for the maiden name, place of birth, whatever ever they can remember. Very, very handy. I uh, picked one of my elderly uncle's brains uh, back in Kentucky. It was a treasure trove of information. So that's very recommended. Uh, don't wait to do that. They won't be around forever. Um, I mentioned I'm not a genealogist. I'm basically a family recorder. And after having been in North America for 13, 14, 15 generations. There are a lot of people and all of my distant relatives, of which there are a lot, uh, are constantly, oddly enough, growing up, getting married, having kids and dying. And it's, Facebook is wonderful for keeping track of all of the, the new events. Um, make friends with your aunts and uncles, cousins, cousins' kids, cousins' kids' kids. Um, they're generally, if you approach them properly, pretty good about giving information. Sometimes it's piecemeal, but it's better than nothing. And Facebook is a great place for getting uh, ad hoc screenshots from people um, to go in the database. They've been very, very useful about that. Well, I'm whipping through here. Um, here's how you install Gramps. It's at gramps-project.org. By the way, this is free. There's no registration required. You can download it as many times as you want, uh, reinstall it if you want. Um, it's written in Python, 
which is a programming language, but Python is not present in Windows by default, so it's got to install Python also. And Python is written with lots of little modules and libraries, zillions of them. So as a result, go to lunch while it installs. Even with a solid state drive, it took about 20 minutes to install, so uh, uh, pace yourself accordingly. Um, once that's started, you can just start entering data wherever you want. If you've got a distant relative that has some sort of genealogy program, ask for them for an export. You can hit the ground running. When I first uh, fired up Family Tree Maker for Windows, I was banging around the internet and happened to find another beach researcher who coincidentally uh, happened to be my fourth cousin. And he sent me an export with about um, 450 people in it. I imported it <laughs> and looking in the notes, I found that somebody had entered in all my mom's paper data. So that let me hit the ground running. Um, so uh, if you know anybody in the family that's got genealogy or working on it, get an export from them and I'm sure they'll be happy to do it and uh, return the favor as you add stuff. We're gonna do an online demo of Gramps. Um, let me see if I can do a new share here. Yeah, here we go. Good, so anyway, this is the live Gramps. Um, little data here. These are all your um, menus up here. Let me show you something. Um, where is that? I never can find it when I want to. Well, anyway, this is the chart and um, I've got it full screen already. You'll notice that, let me go back to me. By the way, you can set, there's a home button here and you can set any person as the home. I have me set as that. And you can see my father here, grandfather, great grandfather. And if you click on them, it'll center on that. There's my uh, great great grandfather, and this is as far back as this line goes. Very handy. You have a dashboard, and this dashboard is configurable. They have what they call gramplets in it. You can add and delete things like uh, there's a notepad, a relationship calculator, stuff like that. You can look at families. For instance, I want to know. Uh, all of the families whose father's last name is Beach. And there they are there. That's my brother Bruce, and some of these are quite distant. Um, and you can look at, for instance, um, oh, let's find me. Oh, I need to sort on uh, the name. There you go. This is quite easy to use. It's um, very easy to add and delete data. Well, here, here's my grandfather. Let me make this a little larger. It's my grandfather, Orville Floyd Beach, Tessie Gorgio Berenger, who was born out on the prairies, all my aunts and uncles who are all deceased now. Um, you can add children, events, add gallery. Let's go say, for instance, Here's my dad. Oh, I'll edit him. Let's see if I can do that. No, this is the this is the this is where you're editing as a person as, as a child, and there's limited amounts of editing there. But I could go up and edit my grandfather. He died just before I was born. These are events. I've got the events highlighted: um, birth, death, and burial, his marriage. And there are places for putting in relevant data here. Um, I have a couple other photos, but this is the one I've chosen to pick. Um, so that's families. We looked at charts, events. You can sort on the type of event. Here's where you can edit event, delete one, add one. 
if you find two duplicate events, you can merge them. Um, let's see what else we got down here. I don't look at these too often. Oh yeah. Here's a birth event for Douglas Cunningham, who happens to be a uh, second cousin, I believe. Um, born in 55, you can add notes in this case, all sorts of stuff. Now, here we go. You can run, um, like for instance, let me go back to the charts, go to the home, which is me, run a report, a, let's call it a text report of detailed ancestral report. Now notice in the reports, as I mentioned, you can configure the number of generations, if you want a page break between generations. Right now, this is set up to do an RTF document, but I'm gonna set up a PDF document, open with the default viewer. And this right here is where it's gonna put the output report. And that's fine. Um, paper options, it's set for letter. I'm gonna set it to D size and I'm gonna make it landscape just, just because. Let's see if we can generate this report. Now notice, <laughs> it's quite hard to view. That's because it's been printed on a, a two by three piece of paper, but you can zoom in. And this is first generation, second generation. This is a text report, not graphical. It's very handy to send a, a relative. Um, graphical reports, we could do a fan chart. We did that before, let's see how it, now you can see this is five generations. And again, you'd have to zoom in on it to see the data. But these are fun to send to relatives, helps you do research. You can find missing people. As it turns out in mine, and this is half a fan chart, just me. It turns out I have all my relatives back five generations. Um, places, I had like we mentioned, I have duplicate places in here, but you can edit any one of these, like for instance, um, Annapolis. This is just the town. Uh, you can put, doesn't have to be a town, it could be a church, uh, any location. You can put uh, latitude and longitude in, in there, address, other pertinent data. You can be detailed as you want or not. That's kind of the nice thing about uh, genealogy. Um, it's one of those things you can work at as you feel like it. I tend to run hot and cold with this. I'll get interested in something and crack one of my old mom's old books to verify stuff and add in a few uh, uh, new second cousin twice removed I found on Facebook. And I might spend six or eight hours over a week and then I won't do anything for a couple months. So it uh, is not demanding on your time except uh, for those relatives who are elderly. Um, sources, um, if you're rigorous about sources, this is where you keep them. My mom had a lot of, this is how far it goes back, um, microfilm censuses from, from the 1800s and she had a huge microfilm reader. Well, all of that stuff is online now, so uh, I gave all that stuff away after she passed. Um, the internet's been a good thing. Other citations, um, these were imported out of hers. I don't use them, so I don't know what they're for. Oh, here we go. Those are the empty citations. Like, uh, she cited this from a microfilm. Apparently, she went to a genealogical library and visited the library and put this in here. My mom was very rigorous. Repositories, not used, media. Here's all of the media I have in the database. Um, I keep, I have a home file server and I keep the masters of all of the uh, genea genealogical photos sorted by surname, a separate folder for every surname. And there are a lot of surnames. Um, 
wish I could find that report. Oh, here you go. Zoom in on that. So I got 5,900 people in the database, males, females, few unknown gender, some incomplete names, missing birthdays. Disconnected individuals, these are people who were a duplicate entry and didn't get related back. Uh, that's some of the maintenance I have to do. 1,864 families, 210 media objects. In this case, they're photos. And they aren't high resolution photos. They're pretty much uh, thumbnails. You're not expected to zoom in on these. And in many cases, the screenshots I get out of Facebook and wherever are not that high resolution anyway. Um, Gramps will size almost indefinitely. About five years ago, they switched from what's called a flat file database, which isn't really a database, it's just stuff stuck in a file, uh, to a real live database because their users who had more than 100,000 people in the database were complaining about performance problems. So presumably, somebody out there is using this for some very serious research. And the other view is notes. This was my original export, GED export out of uh, uh, Family Tree Maker for Windows. Um, I could probably change those and take those out of there, but that's a lot of work. Um, other things to look at, oh, one of the things I wanted to show you, one of the reports you can generate are web pages. You can generate HTML files one per person, one per place, one per event, blah, blah, blah. I think uh, when I export mine, there's 40, 14,000 web pages. None of them are very large, but uh, you can export these. Let me show you what that looks like. Some of you may not be in, into web servers or anything like that, but if you've ever had a hankering, can you see that okay? I hope so. <laughs> yes, we can see it. I think I'm the only one that's got the microphone, so. Thank you. Um, if you've ever had a hankering to play around with a web server, there's a company called Digital Ocean that will let you rent or create a web server out in the cloud, crazy cheap. Um, I just activated this one a couple months ago and it's $5 a month. It's a low-end server, but just for messing around with and hosting my genealogy, it's fine. Um, so you can see the link to the database here. And this is what the export looks like. The, the color theme is configurable. This one happens to be blue. You can look at individuals, surnames, families, places, source, media, thumbnails, etc. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, surnames. Let's go down and look at the bees for me. Actually, we'll go look at my grandson, Andrew, because he's higher up here on the list. There's Andrew Thomas. There's my grandkid, one of many. Um, all the pertinent data and these are clickable links. They will take you to like his sister um, and the same sort of highlighted uh, uh, database. And you can in fact click on me and it'll take you to me and then it'll show you my database or my uh, part of the track. So some people are a little leery about putting stuff out on the internet, but it's really valuable to genealogical researchers. Um, over the years I get one or two or three inquiries about an ancestor because Google has indexed it and some genealogist contacts me and we trade information. So it is useful. Um, Ancestry.com is useful, but it's not free. My daughter uses it and it's $99 a year for her. I don't feel the need for that. Um, I've got a, our uh, database goes back about as far as I want it to. Um, before the US. I'm not, I'm not really interested in tracing it back uh, uh, to uh, Ireland and England, uh, but I am interested in 
uh, tracking everything new for all of the people. I have dozens and dozens as and dozens of second and third and fourth cousins, and I've got them in the database, and they appreciate the information about that. Their uh, relatives and ancestors because people are not real rigorous about letting their children know where they came from uh, in a lot of cases. Um, so this is a good program for messing around with. It doesn't cost you anything except your time. Uh, can import and export. Uh, you can use it as you feel fit. Um, easy to learn. Um, and if you break something, you can go back and fix it. You don't have to relicense it or anything like that. Um, I'm pretty much concluded with the presentation. Um, do we want to see if there's any questions? I can go back and look at other stuff. Okay. Okay, I'm unmuted. So if anybody has any questions, comments, you need to put them into chat. And chat can be found at the, the bottom of the top. It depends on what view you're in. Um, so a lot of people found it. Anybody have any questions? It was a fantastic presentation. I'm never sure how long they're going to take, and I kind of ripped through it too fast. My apologies. Yeah. But we can go back and look at anything anybody wants. Oh, I got one quick question. I'll okay. ask it without having to type it. How did you get all these pictures of relatives in the past? Oh, like your great grandfather and them. Where did you? <laughs> well, <laughs> when my mother got into genealogy in the mid 60s, and over the course of the next generation or so, word got out in the family that she was doing genealogy. So relatives would dig back through the back of closets and send her boxes and boxes of photos. Some of them were even tintypes. And she spent a fair amount of money at the, at the uh, photography store, film store, camera store, I guess back then, getting reprints made. I've since scanned a lot of those. Um, this is why you need to talk to your elderly relatives. Um, don't let them throw away old photos. Um, that's, that's basically how I did it. I was fortunate enough to have somebody uh, pave, the, pave the way in front of me. That's great. We do have another question. Does Gramps integrate with the genealogy websites uh, on, on the web, like Ancestry.com? You can import export out of Gramps and import into Ancestry.com. I did that on a uh, freebie trial of Ancestry.com and it worked fine. Um, I suppose when I get to the age where I'm not going to do this anymore, I will buy, you know, uh, buy an Ancestry.com and upload the whole thing. But as for a live dynamic feed, no. Okay. And does the web software provide any user level security? user level. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Anybody who finds this genealogy database can look at it. This is view only. They cannot change this. This is just an export. This is this web page here is a static export of the Gramps uh, program. Okay, so this the software itself doesn't come with any uh, security built in. I'm not sure what type of security. It runs on your computer at home. Oh, okay. Well, the question is, can I limit the website to just family members? You absolutely can. Oh, uh, as far as logging in, yes, you can do that. Um, that's not specifically related to Gramps, but you can put login passwords when you got, want to go to a particular website. That's not part of Gramps. You'd have to uh, Google how to add uh, page passwords on a web server. Okay. But then. Okay. I was just going to say that, again, kind of limits the utility of it to other genealogy researchers. But if that's what, what, you, want to, if that's what okay. you want to do, you absolutely can. Okay. Uh, this is a long one, and since we got time, I'm going to read it. Uh, I am an Afro-American with Native American, and I'm not going to pronounce the Native American because uh, heritage also. Will this program be able to provide me, provide any info for me? As you know, little is recorded about us upon arriving to the USA. 
I'm very concerned and would like to be able to trace my history as many other ethnic groups are able to do so. We greatly appreciate you help. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm not a researcher, but those links um, that I listed provide valuable resources to um, following people back when they arrived on the U.S. At, uh, on, on our shores. Okay. Okay, hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, uh, that was my caveat. I'm not a genealogical researcher, except occasionally. I'm a documentarian. Yeah, There's did you stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so this stuff is a lot of fun, and you'll find that when word gets out that you're doing it, um, people will be all excited about it, but you do have to bend their arms to provide data sometimes. It's not because they're reluctant, it's just because they're busy with other stuff. So you have to be persistent. Question is, can this be copied so it can be shared? Yes, you can export out in any number of uh, different formats and that's flexible enough to where any genealogy program can import it. Okay. Or you can, if they're not interested in running a genealogical program, generate a report for them on their ancestors or their descendants or whatever they're interested in and email a PDF to them. Okay, so you can let, you can restrict this to say, you know, your father's uh, mother's side of the family. Oh, absolutely. You, you, put, you put her as the, say my Tessie Berenger right there, you say, I want a report on the ancestors of Tessie Berenger, and it will go backwards in time from her. Okay. Have you looked at jerry.com? Um, I have not. Okay. I did, I did play around with Find a Grave. That was a lot of fun. It was surprising how many people are dedicated to taking photos of grave sites and marking and posting the names and locations of them. Yeah, you probably got some stories of tramp singing graves. I know a lot of people do. Yeah, when um, it's kind of an interesting story. Mom got interested in this in about 65. In 74, my dad re retired. And they bought a fifth wheel trailer. And they spent about four months circling around the US. They would stop in some little town. Dad would climb up on the ladder on the top shelves of the church or the county recorder and pull down dusty old birth certificates for mom. Then they'd go <laughs> to the local cemetery and if it was abandoned dad would take his scythe out and clean the weeds out and mom would make carbon markings of the of the cemetery the the, the grave markers and they did that for four or five months one one trip yeah yeah the salt lake city utah genealogical library is very popular it is, and matter of fact, they're the ones who standardized on the GEDCOM export years ago when they kept their data on computers. And back then, they were mainframes or mini computers, very large machines. But they, they're the ones who standardized on the basic export import file. Yeah. I'm sure people have some very interesting stories about their ancestors. Oh, everybody does. And um, I was, uh, <laughs> Uh, I was inputting data the, the first time uh, from my mom's records and I was back about three generations on my mother's mother's side and the program was complaining that the husband and wife had the same last name. I said, yeah, okay, well, I overwrote it and entered it and then I went back and looked and sure enough, they were first cousins. So I thought that was interesting. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? You know, if, if nothing else, download a copy and install it. All you, it takes is a little time. Put yourself and your kids and your parents in it and have fun making reports for people. Oh. <laughs> Anybody wants that? They want to know if you got any famous crooks or horse thieves in your backyard. Not real famous. Um, 
the meteor crater in Arizona was originally called Behringer Crater. Um, my grandmother's uncle was the Behringer who uh, was sure, back then they thought it was a volcano, but he was sure it was a, uh, made by a meteor, and he thought he could mine down at the bottom and pull all sorts of valuable iron ore out. Well, he did prove that it was a meteor, but he never made any money on it. Originally, it was called Behringer Crater, but now it's just Arizona Meteor Crater. Mm. Oh, and on my mother's side, um, we're descended from Daniel Boone's brother. That's about as famous as we get. <laughs> I, okay. I tell if you, if you, Daniel Boone's brother, wouldn't that make you related to Daniel Boone? Vaguely, yeah. Well, he'd be like a, a great, 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 great uncle. Okay. Uh, I tell people that uh, my family took 300 years to move from the East Coast to the West Coast, drinking beer and stealing horses all the way. <laughs> And leaving litters of people. Man, about a hundred years ago, when they were moving from the Dakotas to Washington, every family had 10 kids. Man, talk about a data entry nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Or I do thank you. And again, Orb does give some fantastic Linux and open source pre presentation too. Uh, the last question is, are computer requirements for this program? Um, it's not rigorous. It's a text-based program. There's no video or anything, and it doesn't take a lot of data. I would say any relatively new machine running Windows 7 or later should be just fine. Okay. And is this Windows program, or is it also a Linux program? It started out as Linux. Um, the people, the people creating Gramps originally were Linux only people and they had no interest in a uh, Windows uh, port. But after it had gotten fairly popular, a group of Windows developers said, we'd like to run that on Windows. And because it's open source, they took the source code and ported it over to Windows. Poof, done. But I run it primarily on Linux, yes. Oh, okay, so there's a Linux version also. Yeah, that's how it started out. Yeah, okay. I didn't realize if they were maintaining the Linux version as well. There's two separate groups of maintainers, but they have the same source code, so the lineage is the same. Okay. Okay, and the last question, is a database self-created by small fields? I'm not sure what that means. I think well, they have a- from a Linux user, so I'm- Well, I'm pretty sure that their database has a predefined schema. Uh, you can extend it, I believe, um, but I've never done that. The, 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 the number of fields in every database is very, very extensive. 